Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dunk, and we're here with another update for Seraphim Craft Plus. So, uh, this video I'm going to try to not make it nearly as long as the last one, because that was that was a bit excessive. Um, so let's uh, let's try and be a little more organized this time. Um, so what we're going to talk about first is uh, a couple new crops. Um, if we uh, kind of look behind here, we can see we have cotton plants. Um, this is what they look like when they're full grown, and you can see kind of the different stages of growth. Um, so if we uh, harvest this, you can see we'll get three of these cotton bowls. Um, we have another plant back over here. They're not fully grown. This is agave. Uh, agave will only generate in the Americas region, and uh, you can see up there in the uh, the Wela tooltip um, what the item looks like that, that will drop from this. So we have in here, we can look, um, so that's what cotton seeds look like. These are agave seeds. Um, this is the uh, agave that is dropped from the plant. You can see some samples of cotton clothes. Cotton clothes in general give you um, a little bit of cold resistance. The shirt and pants are the same as wool. They give you plus one. Socks and hat for cotton currently do not give any uh, resistance at any... Uh, in fact, they don't do anything um, right now. If you guys want to leave a suggestion of what you think they should do, as a reminder, the linen socks give you a speed bonus when you're wearing shoes. Um, so I could do that uh, as well with cotton socks, or if you guys th can think of something else. Um, I didn't want to make cotton as strong as wool for uh, cold protection, but there isn't really a level of cold protection less than one, and I didn't want to make each piece of wool clothing give you two. So the shirt and the pants for uh, for cotton are tied with wool. The, um, the hat and the socks for wool are better than cotton, and the cotton coat is... Uh, a little worse than the the wool coat. The wool coat would be minus two heat resistance plus three cold. This is minus one plus two. So that is what cotton looks like. Um, you can see in my inventory we also have one of each type of tool uh, or rather weapon um, and we're going to talk about that really quickly. So something I've done in this is I am kind of prototyping the idea of um, uh, weapon speed. So if we look at each tool, these are actually sorted from fastest to slowest. Um, we mouse over it, it'll say this is fast, and um, hopefully, if you're not colorblind, if you are, I'm very sorry. It says it's uh, green when it says the, the word fast. So when it's green like that, that means it is the fastest of the fast tier weapons. If we look over here, this is red. So javelins are red tier fast, that's the slowest of the fast tier weapons. Next we have the sword, which is quick. Quick is the tier below fast. White means it's average. Then we have red quick for the axe, so the copper axe is a little slower than the sword. The mace is average, the, the best level of average speed. The pickaxe is slightly slower than the mace. The scythe is slightly slower than the pickaxe. And then we have the hammer and the shovel are the slowest. Um, something to note though is that you know, the attack damage of these weapons are slightly different for each one. The uh, the knife does have only 150 damage, um, although the knife does have two different modes. So the default mode there you can see at the bottom right is slashing, but if we change the mode, uh, we can see that it's now the lowest tier of very fast. So it used to be just fast, it used to be the highest tier of fast, now it's gone up to the lowest tier of very fast. So that's something to keep in mind is that um, if you want to switch your, your knife to piercing damage, you will do more damage, but you, uh, sure you'll, you'll have a higher DPS. Um, but you should keep in mind the, uh, the kinds of resistances that enemies have. Skeletons are incredibly resistant to piercing damage, for, for example. Um, so that's not the sort of uh, mode you want to use on them. Uh, They're weak to crushing damage. So in that instance, you'd probably want to use um, a mace or a hammer or a shovel. Maces would be the fastest have a medium reach. Um, hammers are slow, very slow in fact, and uh, have a medium reach. Shovels have a far reach though, so they do a little less damage than the uh, the hammer, but you can reach um, quite a bit farther with them, so that might be something to keep in mind. If you're trying to kill a skeleton and you don't want it to get too close to you, um, for whatever reason you want to stay a little farther back, that might be what you want to use. Um, so anyway, let's take the knife. 
we have here in our agave, and we can just stretch, uh, strip the agave to get um, sisal, 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 some, some kind of fiber. Uh, if we had a proper crafting grid, I'd be able to show you that if I went like that and then put one down here, that would be the rope recipe, because you can make rope out of this. Um, but we can also just load it up onto the loom, and you can see there in the tooltip we're making burlap. So that is actually the uh, the new way that, or not a new way, that is an additional way to make burlap, not just jute. Jute now additionally spawns in Africa instead of just Asia. I believe it also spawns in Europe. Um, cotton will not spawn in Europe, but it will spawn in the Americas, Africa, and Asia. And like I said, agave only spawns in the Americas. Um, so that does mean that every region now has a material that you can make burlap out of. Because burlap sacks are the storage method for um, vegetables and, uh, and other types of foods, um, it made sense that each region should have the ability to, to get it, although the way that you get it is slightly different. Um, we're going to move on to that and over to here. So we have a couple things we're going to talk about here. Um, you can see on the left, we actually have some new items. We have um, a small raw, rawhide that was that's always been in the game. We have this item here, rawhide bag piece. So a rawhide bag piece, two of them, can be cut from a small rawhide, which we can demonstrate right now. So we open it up. We're going to go like this. So we've taken out that. We're going to do like the full H shape. That'll give us two of these small rawhide bags. We can sew those two together to make either a hide bag, or if we did it with leather, we can make a leather bag. So let's take these out and uh, look at how they function. So we open up the bag, and we can see six inventory slots. So we could, you know, throw some stuff in here. Um, it's got the same rules as a vessel or a burlap sack without any restrictions on the types of food you can put in. It does not provide any preservation for food, though. Um, and we can just carry stuff around like that. So we've put stuff in our hide bag, we can carry it around. It should be noted though, that uh, for every day that you have items in a bag, that bag will lose durability. Um, the hide bag has 20 durability, so you can go 20 days of carrying items around in it. The leather bag has 120 days. Uh, remember the default year length is 96. So the leather bag will last you just over a year um, of use. and um, you can't put these in chests. Um, you can put them in when they're empty, but if there's something inside, just won't go inside. Can't, can't put it in. All right, you can see it's gotten a lot bigger. Heavy and large is the, the size where it used to be medium and small. So when it's empty, it can go inside of a chest. It can stack up to four as well, um, when it's empty, but when it's full, can't go in a chest. So these, uh, you also can't place it on the ground. These bags, uh, exist purely as extra inventory in your inventory. Um, but they're not a form of permanent storage. Um, so this, I decided to add these uh, when I was exploring in a world and I could not find clay, and I was traveling and traveling, and uh, um, I was just thinking I need some way to carry stuff around with me. So I had the idea of having a rawhide bag, um, and uh, so that's that's where that came from. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is open up burlap. So um, Shaping burlap like this was not something we could do before. And that'll give us two burlap sack pieces. I'm sure you can guess what we do with these. This is the new recipe for making burlap sacks. It is, um, as you may guess, a little less efficient than it was previously. Previously, two burlap cloth would make three burlap sacks, just on the crafting grid. Now, one burlap, one sack. Because uh, you sew the front and the, half, uh, front and the back together. So you do get less burlap out of it, but um, the old recipe was kind of just a stand-in for this. Uh, it, it really only existed because when I added burlap sacks, sewing didn't exist. Uh, but that was never really the intended purpose. We also look at, just uh, for reference, what you do with a cotton bowl is you take a spindle and you can just get cotton yarn right off of it. Um, so, uh, you know, we can, we can put that away. Uh, the next thing... I want to talk about though is uh, something that has been requested quite a lot. Um, so we can we can string this needle here, and uh, we're gonna take oh sorry getting dark yeah take a wool cloth 
open up our uh, you know our cutting interface here, and we're gonna cut a plus. That'll give us four wool patches. So you may notice that um, this wool coat has taken some damage. It's uh, taken one damage because I threw a spear in there and let it fall on myself. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wool patches we just made, and we're gonna take our coat. And we're going to put the patch up with the coat. And you can see we have a little recipe here to sew our patch onto the coat. And that repairs it. Um, if this had had any other sort of attributes, like I dyed it a certain color or something like that, um, it, it would have maintained those attributes. So if you do get your clothes dyed just the right shade after you've mixed and matched all the different types of dyes, you know, soaked it in one barrel, then another, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you don't want to worry about making a brand new coat and getting the same colors back. You can repair them. Um, each patch re uh, will repair clothing by a different amount. Um, robes take the most number of patches to repair. Uh, and I believe hats take the fewest. Um, so just keep that in mind. You do get four patches for each cloth. But for example, four patches would not fully repair a robe if the robe had like one health left, one durability left. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, something else we should take a look at while we have this clothing is if we hold shift, you can see that clothing now has armor. Um, it's not much, you know, if you're gonna compare it to something like, uh, you know, copper armor, which is like 400 defense, it's only 50, um, which it, I don't know, comes out to like, like a 2% reduction in damage taken, but it is still something. Um, wool is the second best uh, armor from cloth clothing. Um, cotton, I believe cotton and uh, I believe cotton and linen are tied and the best is silk you can see here. Silk has quite high defenses. Um, you can see it's actually like double of what you got from wool. Um, and I, I don't know, th that may not be accurate. If you don't think that's accurate, let me know in the comments. I have heard that, uh, um, uh, silk is, is, was quite valued, um, as a cloth armor, but, uh, I'm not a huge expert on that. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is, uh, logs. So let's open that log pile. Let's open this log pile. And you'll see actually this log pile has large logs in it. Um, and, uh, so instead of having four logs per slot, you can have one large log. You cannot create a log pile with large logs. Um, but once you do create one, you can put the large logs inside and they'll sit nice and fine. You can make charcoal with it. But people have been asking for a long time to have a storage method for large logs. In terms of space efficiency, it is the same um, as if you had chopped these logs into four pieces. It's the same as if you had, you're just doing this. So this is a storage method for large logs that exists now. Um, but the other thing people were asking for relating to logs uh, is uh, a way to make a log house. Finding large thick logs like this is not super easy. And so building with them, not that great. Whereas, uh, you know, most trees are th this kind of thin tree, like this fruit tree here, and they'll drop thinner logs like this. And that, uh, you know, people want to feel to build with them without making log piles. And so the solution I came up with is this. So we craft four of them together. So um, in terms of a recipe, this makes this about the same, this resulting block here, the same value as a thick log block. Remember a thick log block goes into four chopped logs and a chopped log is equal to a regular log in terms of like what you can do with it. Um, although you can't use chopped logs for this recipe. Uh, we get these stacked oak logs. So uh, we can just take a look at what these look like. Um, as you probably expected, it, it's just uh, like the regular log texture. It's had, I've adjusted it so that it looks sort of like it's rounded so that from a distance you can sort of see the division between the two logs. Um, and then it's just got like the four, you know, tops of the logs. But yeah, if you want to build a log cabin, this is probably what would look quite nice. It's a full block, so you can, you know, do everything you want to do with it put your tool racks on it, um, anything like that. Uh, if that. This has been hugely requested on Discord, so I thought it was time to finally implement that. 
Um, so anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoy the update. One more thing I want to say before I leave it is I have adjusted monster spawning so that monsters should, and I want you guys to give me some feedback on this, should now only spawn and despawn at the correct um, apparent time of day. So in a recent, uh, I guess an update or two ago, um, major update ago, maybe a month ago, I don't know. At some point, I introduced the idea that the sun would rise and set based on your latitude and the time of year. It's not going to always be 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. like it is in, in vanilla Minecraft. So if you're um, in the far north or south and it's the summer for you, then you're going to have very long days and short nights. And uh, um, however, monster spawns weren't affected by that, right? Even if the sun was still up, like the game would think that it was nighttime. And so the, the actual light level would be low and monsters would start spawning. But I've adjusted it so that it does take into account the apparent uh, position of the sun. So that if the sun is still up at 8 p.m., monsters should not spawn. Uh, should not be able to spawn yet. Or if the sun hasn't risen yet at like 8 a.m., the monsters will still be spawning. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. It means that in the winter, going outside, if the sun isn't up, you know, you probably shouldn't go outside. Uh, and if the sun is up, then you can go outside. Um, of course, there is, uh, there's always been that, there's a config option to disable that. If you want to go back to the vanilla 6 a.m., 6 p.m., um, all of those, all of that will be disabled as long as you enable that option. It's off by default. But if you go into the configs and you enable default celestial angle, I believe that's what it's called, then, um, you'll get the old vanilla calculations back if for some reason this doesn't suit you or you think it's imbalanced or, or whatever the case may be. It is configurable. Um, I knew it wouldn't, or I, I guess there'd be some people that would not like that feature. Um, for one thing, it means that if you are in the Arctic or Antarctic and it is winter, it's always nighttime. So that's 24 hour monster spawns, not so great. Um, so anyway, that's anyway okay. That's all I wanted to say. Um, that is this update for you guys. There's also some bug fixes in here. A um, ton of them just sprinkled around, uh, including a few that were causing some difficult crashes. If you guys enjoyed this, please leave a like. Um, I will once again be mentioning that I have a Patreon. If you want to support me, the only tier we have is one dollar. Um, so there's no special rewards you get for donating any more than that. If you want to donate more, that's fine. Um, you don't have to support me. Terraform Craft Plus will never cost anyone anything except for my time. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do this as kind of like a, a labor of love. This is a passion of mine. I really enjoy working on the mod. I really enjoy hearing all the nice things you guys have to say or negative things about it. Uh, just getting your feedback. And... Uh, I hope to continue doing it for a long time in the future. But uh, um, the one thing I can say that you will get if you are a patron or were a patron on Patreon is if you want to make a small request, and I think uh, it's a really easy, simple little thing to do, and it isn't already planned, and someone else hasn't already requested it, then I will say, okay, I can do that for you. And at some point in the future, whenever... I'm working on a feature that would involve that thing. I will add, add I will add your request into the game. Um, if you make a larger request, uh, I may say that's a little too much. Or if you ask for something impossible, I'll just say no, I can't do that. Um, like if you say oh, I want to have you know cubic chunks up to the stratosphere, I'll say no, <laughs> not allowed. Um, if you have a slightly larger request and your donation is a little higher, then I'm, I'm probably a little more willing. Um, to, to comply to that, or, and I'll say this, you could be a $1 donator, you could ask for a massive request, but if it's a really, really good idea, then I'll have to say yes, because I'm not going to turn a, a really good idea down just because it's going to be a lot of effort. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to be away for the next week going on vacation. And uh, I may have access to Discord, but I definitely won't have access to my computer um, in any development environment. So this will be the last update or bug fix for a little while. Um, so uh, I really hope nothing goes wrong here. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.